Hi, and welcome to this video on how to create a point of sale system in Business Central. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, in one of the previous videos, I played around with my uh, barcode scanner and um, promised to use it for something useful. Um, and I was just planning on showing how you could scan item numbers on a sales order, and that would be it. But then I thought, why not create a point of sale system? Um, and so that's what we're gonna do in this video, a simple point of sale system, but it, this could be a basis of, for something more advanced. Um, the concept will be that a receipt is just a sales invoice. Um, and in order for that to work, I have, I have done a bit of preparation in order for you guys not to sit and look at me just type and type and type and type. There'll be plenty of typing in this video, but um, I did some preparation. So here is Visual Studio Code. The first thing I did was I added a, uh, you know, a setup table. So we have a, a field where we can, can enter who is our cash customer. So in case of a cash uh, transaction, uh, we still need to sell to somebody. So we designate a, a, a customer to be the cash customer. The other thing I did was I added a field to the payment methods. Um, and payment methods are awesome. Uh, the field I added was a simple uh, check mark saying that this payment should be a POS payment. Uh, so we can make the UI simpler. Um, but let me show you the payment methods we got right here. One of the cool things about payment methods is that we have a balance account. So in this case, if cash is specified as the payment method on an invoice, then when you're posting the invoice, a payment is automatically applied. Uh, so you don't post the invoice and then you need to pay it and so it's paid against whatever account it is. Um, and, and typically the balance account, in this case, I've just used the, uh, the our cash in hand account, but it could also be some sort of settlement account. So when you get the settlements back from the credit card company or, or from from the, the bank drops and so on, you you will settle the uh, the cash account. But anyway, so posting the uh, an, a sales invoice with the payment method, uh, that has a balance account will create a payment. So we have a cash customer we're going to sell to, and we are we have a payment method that will take care of the payments. So basically, what the only thing we need to do is construct an invoice as easy as possible and post it. That's it. So that's that's the that's that's what we're going to do. Um, I did some more stuff uh, just to avoid you guys having to look at me type and type and type and type and type. I created, because I think we got, I'm gonna need a, uh, a, um, a fact box with the um, total amount. So I created a fact box, uh, just showing the amount and amount including VAT fields from the from the cell setter. I showed, I, sorry, I created a, uh, a, a list part page that has the, the sales line tip 39, number, description, quantity, amount. Very, very simple. Um, I took what we created in the other video for the, for the barcode, and then I improved it a bit. So this is the, the scanner thing. Um, and the change from last. So if you haven't seen the last video, I suggest you go look, take a look at that one just to see how this piece of code ended up being what it is. Um, we talked about that we added the listener to the parent of the iframe. Uh, so I actually now add the, added the listener both to the parent and to the iframe. And inside my iframe that is still one pixel wide, I created a simple div box. And in that one, I applied a hack uh, that's setting the tabulation index to minus one would mean that this div will uh, 
will accept to get um, focus control. Uh, so, so when I was playing around with it and, and preparing f for this video, I discovered that in some cases, like when you posted something, uh, we'll get to it, uh, I promise. But then you would actually lose lose uh, uh, focus. So the the focus would be somewhere in the browser or outside the uh, the page we're on, uh, meaning that suddenly we couldn't actually get the um, the scan information. So I added this one because then I added another file here where I simply was able to grab that div because we had the tab index for minus one. So I could set focus on that and there before I could bring in focus back into Business Central. Um, so I think that's it. Um, so let's get to it. So, so the idea is that we'll have one page that is the RPOS system. Uh, and I made a mental note that I should be 17, uh, 57 100 because I put that in the launch. So here we go. That will be the, our point of sales page. Um, and of course, you should always put a caption on, on a page, point of sale. Um, so the source table in this case is of course sales headers. Sales header. Um, the source table view is because we were, so remember sales header have quotes and credit memos and blanket orders and stuff like that, but we're only inter and, and sales audit, we're only interested in, um, in invoices. So let's make this source table view invoice. And um, it should surely, we should probably be edible. I'm, I'm still, pages are sometimes behaving strangely, but we're not uh, allowed to, to insert anything on this one because we'll control that. So the page type, in this case, we want the page type to be a document, meaning that we have a header and some lines. Um, and usage category. So what is the usage category? How should we find it in the menu? We can find it in, um, we'll find it in documents. I mean, perhaps not documents. That's that's something that's more like a history. Uh, task, how about task? I think tasks is a good usage category. And when you apply usage category, you also need to put in a replication area. Um, so let's add a layout. So the, and I think what we, what we want, of course, in, in the content area, um, Hang on, what did I do there? Added some funky uh, parentheses. So in the content area, we need some sort of indication of what we're doing. So so let's actually create a, uh, a global variable here. And let's call that POS status, an option. Um, and and awaiting new receipt that could be a good start uh, option and then something like uh, receipt active something like that so so we know status and and we got we're going to use that for figuring out what to do when we're scanning something so we need to have some sort of state um, so we might as well show that. So field status, POS status. Um, and when we're adding a field like that, that's just from a global variable, um, you kind of need to add a caption in order to make it nice because there's no caption on a global variable. So we had that. Um, let's add the... Uh, the document number, um, so we can see the current receipt number. And um, just to keep track of it, just, we're not sure if we actually need this, but let's show the name of the customer. This should, right now it should always be like that cash customer, but, but let's try it anyway. 
Um, I guess that's it. That's relevant. So we we can add the. Uh, so remember, I created a a uh, list part for for the line. So we can let's add that now. Lines and the POS lines. Uh, so we are, when we're adding a part, we need to we we always need to make sure that that the parts are connected and you do that with the sub page link saying that uh, so document type equal field document type meaning that we'll grab the that value from that at the from the parent record and the same with so document number equal field um, let's see, field number so that's a sub page link. Still rem always remember the application area. There we go. Um, and then we need to add our, our scanner, you know, the, the, the single uh, the single pixel scanner. Um, let's compile, see how this looks. Make sure that we're not completely off track here. Um, and this looks this this perhaps this looks more or less what we expected it to look. Uh, let's uh, so we can see that that this one is edible. Uh, we got an existing sales order. Um, so, so let's improve this a bit. One thing we do need also, remember actually I, I created a, so let's say area fact boxes. Um, and it's, that's a, let's call it total and what do you call it? PS receipt total. Um, again, remember the application area. And if you remember, we had the exact same thing here. So sub page link, we also need that here, sub page link. In this case, it's almost the same as before. The, re the difference is, so we can actually, let's copy paste because nothing ever goes wrong when you're copy pasting code. Uh, so this goes wrong because we're actually linking the same record, the same tables. And so it's actually number equal number and not document number because number on the sales line. So, so the danger is that on sales header, you have a number field. That's the number of the, the document and the doc on the sales line, you have a document number field that refers to the number field, but you also have a number field, which is the item number or GL account number or stuff like that. So let's just compile this again quickly and see where we are at. Okay, so we have the PS receipt total. Uh, this is nice. Um, okay, okay, we can continue. So we know, let's actually just make a mental note up here that we have a scan a trigger here also. So there's something to do. We need to handle the scanner, but clearly uh, we shouldn't see an existing sales order or uh, sales invoice. So, so let's, uh, let's think about that for a second. And the best way to handle that is simply let's, let's filter it away. So uh, on open page, um, let's set a filter. And, and and we can just say that the document number should be blank. So how do you set a set a filter to filter on blank? Well, if we just set set a filter number, nothing. This is the same as do not set a filter. So we actually need to put a percentage one in and then as a, an additional parameter, we add in a blank. So the blank will be passed in as a true blank. Uh, so if we run this now, there we go. Now we do not have um, any data. So let's, make sure that that status field we added up here 
uh, is not editable because we don't want the user to be able to change that. Um, even though we have a global variable as an option and uh, I think it's just, just proper to actually initialize this with the uh, with the correct value, even though it by default might get the correct value. In case we end up in ends up in actually changing the uh, the options around, uh, this will still be correct. Okay, so this is pretty awesome. So so now we have you know the the UI structures. Um, I think what would probably be good is to think about some actions that could happen on this page. And the first action that needs to happen is probably that we get a new receipt. So we clearly need a function for that. Um, and and what could happen on new receipt? Well, new receipt would we'll, we'll probably need to set up because we know that customer guy. Um, so let's initialize a new variable. So, so the, the problem is that when, when you're working on a um, on a card page or a document page, it's kind of the same thing here. Uh, you need to be very careful about what you do on REC, especially if you do, you know, inserts or or stuff like that, because that has a tendency to confuse the page itself. So in this case, we want to create a new sales header. So let's, so let's create the new sales order header, but in a separate variable. So we don't mess around with, with the record that Business Central thinks that it, it's controlling. And let me add the setup also. QS setup. Um, this is excellent. So we'll need a new sales header. We'll say that the document type on this one is sales header document type. Let's make sure that you guys can see what I'm typing, colon invoice, right? Um, and what we can do now is just do an, do a, do an insert. Insert true, meaning that we'll, ins we'll trigger the uh, insert trigger. So this one will get a number. We have a document type, uh, so we'll get the proper document number here. Um, then what we can do, and this is this is okay. So we can now tell set filter number to uh, the number of our newly created document, and then just asks to find the first thing. There's only one record, um, and clearly past status is now we we are already in a in a receipt. So let's make sure that we update that. Um, so what else do we need to do on this invoice? Well, if we remember the um, the cash customer. So so let's grab that cash customer from the uh, from the setup and validate into sell to customer. And since this is a POS system, we need to put something in posting data. That's of course just today. And when that, we need to make sure that we're modifying the record because we're doing this here. So let's actually modify it again. So I think this is pretty good new receipt functionality. Um, eventually, I want to trigger everything by the scanner, but just to, to get us going, let's add a, uh, a some actions on the page. Um, I will add them in, in, in processing because that's the easiest, then we don't have to promote uh, groups. So let's do new receipt action here. Um, caption, well, let's do this the right way. Caption equal new receipt. Um, always remember the application area. I've said that a million times. Image. I think that's actually a called new receipt. There is, there you go. And promoted true, promoted category process, promoted is big true, promoted only true. There we go. 
And then there's an on action trigger and we want to call our new receipt function here. Perfect, Let, let's try it out. Compiled, so, so far so good. I can close some of the old ones because so I click new receipt. We got new receipt on cash customer, receipt active, it has a number. This is perfect. Okay, excellent. Okay. Um, then perhaps we should. I think I think we we need to consider what happens uh, on the scanner. Let Let's actually talk a bit about the scanner because it's the 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 main star of of, of the show. So let, let's go up and find the scanner. Where is it? It's there, to do. Um, and I got, hang on, hang on, let me see where we at here. So I got a ton of, uh, I got yelled at, right? Because you all know the field guide, my book about Business Central, not about programming, but about not for, for developers, but for your customers, for your consultants. And this thing has a barcode. And, and people say, Eric, why didn't you promote your book and, and scan that instead of that stupid magazine about dogs? So I'm going to do this today. Um, so I'm going to put this somewhere where I can scan it right here. Um, But I also kind of want to, so, so what I did, you see here, I, I printed out two barcodes and, and let me actually show you what, what we have. So if I, I'm scanning my book, we get a barcode, that's great. Um, if I'm scanning the, uh, the label from the, the dark magazine, I get a little barcode, but then I created another barcode. And if I'm scanning that, it just says cash. And my idea was that I want to, um, like, you could put a small barcode on the screen or something like that, so so the the sales clerk can just scan. Okay, you're paying with cash. Bing. So an entire receipt can actually be operated by by scanner. I think that would be pretty cool. Um, so with that in mind. Um, we need to figure out what we're scanning and, and we need to figure out when we're scanning. So I think we need to start by saying case pass status of POS status. Oops. And now you see, this is, this is classic. Let me show you this. So now we got the whole uh, up, up there somewhere, the whole red section, just because I wrote case in, Sometimes the compiler gets really confused and say, okay, the rest of the file is just broken beyond help. So there's no variable called POS status. All of them might be. Um, so sometimes it's actually better to you know, add that end that was missing. And then the, it's, um, it's not as mad at you. You see now we only have a couple of red lines. So in case of waiting new receipt, what happens? Um, if you scan in this mode, well, clearly we need to trigger the, our new receipt function. And um, without anything, so so think about it. If we are scanning, if we, if we were to scan the, the payment type, the cash, the payment type barcode. That wouldn't make sense because we don't have a receipt yet. So I guess we can, we can, let's create a variable called item. Wow. Item. There we go. And say that if we can get item get barcode, then, well, then it's clearly an item we have scanned, so we we can uh, we can do something like that. I'll do 
control dot and use the uh, AL code actions to create a procedure for me called scan item. It takes an item as a variable or a parameter. If this is, if the item.get failed, then, well, in this case, we don't want to do anything. So we'll just ignore it. Um, but if the POS status is receipt active, then it's a whole different. So we don't need to do a, uh, a new receipt, but we can we can start by item get barcode. Make sure you guys can see this. Then it's clearly the scan item we have done. Otherwise, else if let's create another variable here. So PM. So if we're scanning a payment method, and and now I can hear you guys. Say, but but Eric, wait. What if you have a payment method and an item with the same number, and I say change one of them, or you can start playing with prefixes and stuff like that. But in this simple version, just make sure that you don't have any payment methods that has the same name as any of your item numbers, then you're good. So the payment method get barcode. So if this is the case, then we need to pay and post, I guess, with this payment method. I'll do the same thing, control dot, create the procedure. And I think that's our scanning function. Unless there's something I'm not really considering here. So right now we only have two statuses the, the receipt can be in. Either we are rating something or we're working. Okay, so that's easy enough. Uh, let's go down and find all those empty functions both of them, um, they're on here. And I think the scan item is the most complicated and we need that before we can implement payment anyway. Um, so clearly we, we're gonna do something with sales lines here. So we might as well create a sales line variable while we add it, sales line. Um, and I know that we are going to work with the line number. So remember the primary key of a sales line is document type, document number, line number. Uh, and line number are increment with with 10 thousands, uh, unless you then insert lines in between. So we need to emulate that. Um, so the first thing we need to do is filter our way into this. Uh, so we filter on the, uh, the the document type and the document number. Um, and and actually, hang on, hang on. So we're not interested in. Okay, so I'm just changing my my plan here in the in the middle of this. So let me let me actually make one comment. Um, so I'm not. Just, I, I could do this and say, okay, now I need to filter on sales document SL, so sales on document type colon invoice. And and this is this is totally valid um, because I know that the, I'm always working on sales headers, uh, sales headers that are type invoice, but I rather do this so I take the document type from the document that we're already working on. So in case we suddenly decide that our POS system should not run on sales invoices, it should run on sales orders. The only thing we need to change is this one uh, and, and that one. Um, but always do take stuff like that from the related don't don't replicate just take the information you already have um but i i guess in reality before we know if we before we know when we're scanning an item the first thing we need to figure out 
is if we already scanned this one before. Um, so actually, we need to go set range type uh, SL type colon item and then set range number with the item number that we're coming in with. So we need to figure out if we already have a line on this sales invoice on this receipt with this item number because in that case we do just want to increment the quantity not add another line so if find first on this one meaning that we already have the sales line um, then we just need to do sales line validate quantity comma sales line quantity plus one sales line modify true and we're done in that case the other case is that we do not have this one um and and so so there are reusing variables is not necessarily best practice so 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 now we have a sales line variable and uh, we used it for something so we can either just reuse it or, or create a new one in this case i'm going to reuse this so in order for me to reuse this i need to remove two of the filters so i'm going to remove this filter and then i'm going to remove this filter um we could also have created a new variable but uh in this case i remove the filters so now the only filters i have are these two so now i can go and say that if if a sales line find last uh, then the next line number would be the the line number we have plus ten thousand otherwise our next number will be 10,000 because in that case there are no lines so I could do an SL reset now remove the, the filters um, and we can go and do SL document type equal rector document documentate document type um, and SL uh, document number equal rec dot number uh, and SL line number equal next number and then SL insert true and now we can do SL valid oops wow validate the type with a sl type colon item and sl validate number with our item number so the pattern here the, the the way i always approach something like this is basically to emulate what has been typed so in this case when the last thing we need to validate is quantity uh, and we just going to do one and then we're going to modify true so what we have here is basically i get a new line that's the first thing then i select the type and i do validate on everything because that's what's happening when you when you're typing so i know i'm going to type in in the type then i'm going to type in the the number put the item number in and then i'm going to move over to a quantity of type one and exit the line so i emulate that in code uh, um, in this case, uh, validation typically works terrible uh, when the record is not, it potentially works terrible when the record is not uh, created yet. So the, the pattern of filling out the primary key, insert, modify, mod insert, and then validate, 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 modify is, is a very, very solid pattern because that's the pattern that gets used and, and, and enforced in the UI. Um, so with that, I think let, let's let's 
get rid of this file because otherwise we can't compile. So then let's compile, package is created, let's run. And uh, hey, this is exciting. This is exciting. Let's see. So they are very blank. So now I'm just going to scan the book. Whoa. See that? So, so let's, uh, let's, so we got a new receipt. We got a line added and I added my, my book into the, um, the item table. I can scan, let's scan, scan again. Remember the code, if it was already there, then quantity should be uh, incremented. And we also, we got the, the total. See, this is nice. So you can see, see how much the customer owes you. Scanning again. And the quantity is updated. It's great, the amount updated. But, the fact box is not updated, so we need to fix that. Let me just scan the um, the other item. That also works. There we go. So, but there's, right now there's no way for us to finish this one. But let let's tackle one issue at the time. So the fact with the fact with the fact box is that those fields are not always updated. The best way to update them is to release, open and release. So, so we need to find the code unit that's called release sales document. And then at the end of this thing, we're going to release the sales header. Uh, but if that's released, then when we are modifying it, we need to reopen it. So we need to reopen at the beginning. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> Scanning. That's good. And now you can see that the right up there, the, the total is updated perfectly this is this is this is awesome okay um okay so so let's go down and check the next the pay and post function what do we do about that um i guess the first thing we need to do is simply to validate the payment method um, because we know that now, so we can we can we can validate that with the one we got in. Um, I guess that's it for changing the header. Um, then we need to post, and post is in code unit sales dash post code unit eighty. Um, in a unless we're in a really really high performance uh, situation. I, I just love to add the set suppress commit. So the, the code unit 80 doesn't commit in the middle and numbers are not reused or reused. So there's lots of uh, opinions on that. So I need to say post run, and what we're posting is simply the, the sales header. Then it's posted. So now we know that the POS status can no longer be active, right? So the POS status have to be awaiting new receipt. Um, and then we probably need to do something about the page because the record is gone now. So the record we had on the page is gone, uh, but the page does not necessarily know that. Uh, so the best way of doing that is doing a, a cur page update false. And I think let's do it. So so let's try this. This is this is exciting. I'm ready, ready to shoot here. 
ready to click. Uh, so I'm scanning the book. Boom. And then I'm going to remember the the cache thing. So I'm going to scan the cache thing. Let's see what happens. We saw that. That was freaking fast. Uh, let me do that again. So so watch. I'm scanning. Oh, downloads. JS color downloads and sound. So you see what happened here. Remember what I talked about in the beginning that sometimes Business Central can throw off the cursor uh, control so nothing is in, in focus. And that was, so uh, let me close this one again. So where what has focus right now? I can try and scan again. Clearly nothing happens. We don't get a number, so we're still waiting, but we get the control J suddenly of this one, which is the character we are trying to, to suppress in, uh, in, in, the, in the JavaScript. See video one on that. Um, so where is the cursor? I can try to press tab. And if you saw that, I got to the uh, search thing. I can press minus tab. And now I'm up inside the browser. So I'm, I'm out of the browser. So the, the only way to fix this um, is actually to remember that I told you that I added a uh, construct, scanner, anchor, div, and all that, and added a function called set focus. So this is the only way I have. So if I do cur page dot scanner dot set focus after we post, after we update, let's see if this works. So I scan the book and this is, so now we're still up there. Let's click here and see what happens. I scan the book, works, scan cache, works. I scan the book, now it works, cache, book, book, doc, doc, post, doc, 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 post. This is freaking fast. So I've already done 10 receipts and it's, not even, well, it's in the middle of the night here in British Columbia, but uh, so that's pretty, so the only thing that could make this better is that we actually, see, so, so the strange thing was that the focus kind of got lost. Uh, let's, um, I can't remember if I added it in here. So it's actually at that one. So it will get focused first. So browsers are still finicky. Uh, and let's see where focus is now. I'm scanning the book. It works. So that was a one off. I work, work. So I think when we're missing one little thing in order for this to, uh, so, so, we are missing a couple of things and, and some of them I'm not gonna do in this video because it's already too long. Um, one is we need to print the receipt and um, I think I'm gonna do that in a separate video with a uh, with the task scheduler so we get it outside the client. Um, but we clearly need to add a, um, a way to, to, to pay uh, without scanning. Let's say you want to select uh, without a barcode. So um, let's do that as the last thing. Pay, action, caption, pay. Uh, application area, all, image, uh, the payables, that's, that's a payment. That's a good image and promote, promote, promote. 
Um, and let's get it up where you can see it. So trigger on action. Uh, and we need some payment method, surely. And we need the post code unit also. So that sales dash post. Um, and then, you know, remember we added, I had added a field for payment method. So let's set a filter on PM that this should be POS payments only. And then do a if page run modal, modal, otherwise it gets get really funky. And we do a page and I added a page here for us, a select payment, select payment. Oh, you see, I do the set filter. You guys yelling at me, it's a set range. So with the PM equal action lookup. So this this is, if, if you need to look up page and, and, and open up a dialog, then page.run, page.run modal, the page and a variable and encapsulate in an if statement with action uh, equal action lookup, okay then you are golden so now we can just use our pay and post with that record and we should be done let's try that so i scan the dog and the field guide and now i hit pay how do you want to pay i want to pay with cash because that was the only one Post it. Ha! Did you see that? I have no idea how that happened. Let's try again. Point of sale. We have a new. Let's scan the, the field guide. Let's make sure we have the cursor in the right spot. And we're completely. Okay, I'm gonna redeploy here in a second. So clearly that worked differently coming out of the... Coming out of the action than out of the, the trigger. We're gonna just start again. All right, if you know what happened, let me know in the comments below. I've never seen that before, just closing a page like that. Um, I'm scanning the book, that is good. I'm selecting pay. I'm selecting cash, it gets posted. And the page is done. Interesting. Um, so clearly something is going on there. I'm not gonna figure that out now because this video is already too long. Anyway, this is, this was, this is my poor man's uh, point of sale system. Um, Lots of uh, lots of ways you can improve this, uh, like handle returns just by creating credit no memos, um, adding a dialog just you know advanced mode to just go into the sales order interface and you can do all sorts sorts of stuff. Uh, we could also think about scanning customer numbers to to create a a customer based uh, document instead of just a cash customer. Um, triggering discount by scanning a, 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 a discount code, stuff like that. Uh, tons of uh, options. The code is going straight to, to GitHub. You'll find the link below. Uh, and while you've, you look for the, for the code, make sure that you subscribe to the channel so uh, you, you won't miss all the, the other videos that are coming on this. Um, and if you want to ask, let me know in the comments. I try to reply to every single comment. Or if you go to Twitter and look me up on Twitter, is there something that you want to talk with me about? Um, but until next time, have a wonderful day.